Paymon. Is my mic on? Can oh. you guys hear me? Test. Can I thought guys... we were going to get the big TV. That's, it's fine. Oh, there we go. There it is. Nice. Don't stand right. too far so we both be in the picture. Yeah. This is weird. This is confusing. There we go. <laughs> me too. All right. What's going on? Where are we? OK, do I hit play and see what happens? Where? Oh, it's right here. OK, so go back. Side. All right, sorry. <laughs> it's not like we're in the technology business or anything. Uh, thank you very much for having us. Uh, it's great to be here. We've been traveling a lot this past year, uh, so it's good to uh, be situated uh, for, for a little while at least. Uh, my name is uh, Mohammed Parhaman Awadi, and this is my brother Payman Parhaman Awadi. And we're the hosts and producers of a social travel series called PETA Planet, and, and that's what you saw a little while back. And uh, we're, we're an award-winning travel series, and we broadcast to about 50 million homes across the world, uh, in particularly through Dubai One TV, which is a Dubai-based satellite channel. I, I saw somebody from Dubai One TV here. There. There we go. There you people. go. Awesome. So, uh, Payman, you want to take it from here? Sure. So, uh, if I can maybe get that. Thank you, sir. So I, um, we've been doing Peter Plant for two seasons now, and we've been to 24 countries just for filming Peter Planet in the last year and a half. We've been traveling quite a bit, and I, I kind of put all of it into statistics for you just to get an idea of what, what we did, but you'll see six continents, 27 because we had some countries that we flew in out of, and we'll talk about that a little bit in between, but how many plane rides we took. Um, on the right side is some statistics that I, that I like, and the one that particularly I like is piranhas avoided. So we were in Costa Rica last year, and we were whitewater rafting, and we jumped into the water, and we swam. It was a beautiful day. There was a lot of fish around. Later, when we actually did some fishing, we caught one of the fish, and it turns out that they are in the family of the piranha, and we didn't know. Nobody told us that, so. I think uh, my, my favorite is, uh, well, it's not my favorite, but we, we visited three urban slums around the world. One is uh, the biggest in Africa, which is called Kibera. Uh, one is in, uh, in the Philippines, which is called Payatas. And the other one is the favelas of Rio de Janeiro. And uh, when we were in Kenya, if you look right under it, it says near death experiences one. So we were filming in, in the slums, and you know, we were really caught up in what we were doing. Uh, so, so were the crew, and we didn't notice that a few like gangs were like eyeing us. We had all this you know equipment, this expensive equipment. So they were like following us and eyeing us. But luckily, we had an antidote to that, and that's why we didn't get, I don't know, kidnapped or, or killed or robbed or whatever that that was. We hired our own thug. We hired our own gang member. His name was Bangkok, and he had one eye. I'm not kidding. I, so, and he was actually apparently one of the most feared guys <laughs> in the slums. So nobody would touch us. They'd watch us and they'd say, man, I wish I could get those cameras. But they couldn't do anything. I, I tell you, actually, my favorite statistic is, uh, is the one in the middle that says, change makers interviewed. And we'll talk a little bit about who are these people that we come in contact with. But the number there is, is very significant. 144 change makers around the world. and together with our social media uh, following and the social media following of these 154 people, as well as the brands that are involved with us, we're responsible for almost one billion social media impressions in the last two years. So if you're wondering how we packed all of this in in such a short period of time, if you go back, there's like uh, two statistics that basically explains all of it. One is uh, world's best coffees, do you see that? That's the infinite sign, so we were like, running on coffee all the time. And the last one, which is hours spent sleeping, we just didn't sleep. We just took sleep out of the equation. We just filmed the whole way through. So what is it that, that we do as Peter Planet? And we talk about social travel. And we've been talking about social travel as far back as 2009. And if you look at this hashtag, if you can go back, you'll see that we um, are the ones that used it to, to begin with, and we predominantly are the ones that, that use it today. And what is social travel? Social travel is about traveling around the world. It's about connecting with people over social media. And it's about seeing cities and seeing the world and being introduced to cultures through these connections that you make 
over social media and obviously sharing all of this over social media. We feel like it's the, the future of, of travel. Well, I, I mean, I, uh, we, we like to compare it a lot to tourism. You know, how, how does social travel different, how is it different than, than tourism? Uh, hence our tagline, don't be a tourist, be a social traveler. So social travel is about exploring the world. It's about participating in life and it's about sharing your views on social networks. Now, how is that different from, I don't know, tourism? Well, what we found during our, during our travels is, as an example, Rome. People would fly to Rome, travel to Rome. They'd stay at an international hotel. They'd eat uh, you know, at, a, at a pizza hut or whatnot. They may have like coffee at a, at a Starbucks and, and they'll visit the usual places, you know, the Colosseum and, and, and stuff like that. And then they'd head home. Now, what's the problem with that? There, there's no problem with that. I mean, that's a, that sounds like a nice vacation. But for us, we find travel should give meaning to your life. So for us, it's about going there. It's, it's about meeting people. It's about learning where do locals go to eat? Where do they have their coffee? Where do they have their food, their pizzas or whatever that is? So, so it's all about participating. This is probably our, 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 favorite, uh, our favorite slide. I mean, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm personally, I'm pretty offended by how Arabs and Arabs dressed like this are portrayed a lot of times on the news and on programming. I mean, every time there's this very expensive painting that needs to be shipped out of somewhere, you find somebody in the background that's wearing Qatar Agal and Kendora. <laughs> every time. <laughs> Every time you see you know, somebody that wants to buy a car, like an expensive car, somebody's in Kendor and Qatar Agal. What I'm more offended, and, and, and that's, that's just TV, and then you've got the, the news, obviously. I'm actually more offended by the fact that those people are actually not Arabs. And you can tell by the way they're wearing their Kendor and Qatar Agal. We travel this way, and we travel the world, and we'll talk at length about it. But the reason why we do this is because we are going to start telling our own narrative us as Arabs. So what, one of my favorite stories uh, is when we traveled to Austin, Texas in season one. And just uh, a couple of weeks before we, we were going to travel there to film, the Boston Marathon happened. And you know, there were a lot of questions immediately on, on, on the social networks on you know, was, who was it, who did it, you know? and a lot of eyes were pointed towards the Middle East. So we, we immediately thought maybe we should not shoot in, in the US, maybe we should not go to Austin, just pick another destination and go there. And we, we had a talk with the crew and, and we decided, you know what, this is exactly why we should go to the US because whoever did whatever they did, they don't represent us. They are not us, we condemn that. So we need to go there and tell them this other narrative about us that we keep talking about on Peter Planet. And we went to Austin and we went to a little farm outside of Austin where this awesome guy, he was uh, originally from Venezuela, was making this great cheese, non-pasteurized cheese that his father taught him how to make. It was the most delicious cheese. And he made it there because there are these, you know, it was a, it's a cow farm and he sourced the milk from there and he made the cheese there. And I remember we were standing outside and we were all talking, it was a gorgeous day, cows everywhere, and this pickup truck started to slowly cruise close to us and then it stopped. And then we looked inside and there was a, a guy in there wearing a, a baseball cap and he had, you know, pretty big beard, not as big as mine. And, uh, you know, and he was just like staring at us, you know, he was wearing jeans, he looked like scruffy, and he, he looked out, he, he put down his window, and he looked out, he's like, howdy. And we, we said, hey, and we're dressed like this, by the way. Uh, we dress like this everywhere, by the way. And we like, hi, and he's like, what you all doing? And I, we, I said, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're actually from Dubai. We're here to film uh, an episode of Peter Planet. It's a social travel series and everything I just told you. And he's like, Dubai? We're like, yes. He's like, well, I thought I'd just drive by and show you what a real hillbilly looks like. <laughs> you all have a nice day. And he just left. And that was as bad as it ever got across 24 countries that we visited. It never got bad. And as, as you will see throughout this, pre this uh, presentation is, you know, the greatest truth is that we as people, it doesn't matter where you come from in the world, 
we are more similar than we are different. So I just want to be a little bit conscious of the time as well. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I want to be a little bit conscious of the time uh, to not have a repeat of uh, a couple of months ago, we were invited by the, the Clintons as the first Emiratis to host a session at the Clinton Global Initiative. And we actually had almost got yanked off stage because we went over time and uh, uh, US President Barack Obama was about to come on stage. So yeah, we only kept the they president were, waiting. They, 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 they kept writing, it's time to leave. It's time to leave, get off. So I just want to be conscious of that. I'm going to go to the next uh, slide. Um, how do we do this? So how do we tell all these, uh, these stories? I mean, what is Peter Planet? It's three things which I want to share with you. One, it's, uh, it's films. And what we do is we are a reality travel show uh, that is produced uh, by a company called Kabira, which myself and my brother own. And we are also the hosts of the show. So we're actually behind camera and on camera. And um, we go around and we travel, but we also take people with us on this travel on our, on our journey. So they're actually living the travel with us. And through these travels, obviously, we share a little part of our culture, and we, sh we learn a little bit about other cultures. And we're constantly connecting people all across six continents. And throughout this time, what we do is we are constantly engaging with not just the people that we meet, but also everybody that follows us across all of our social media channels. They are constantly involved and engaged with us. And we'll talk about how that happens, but we are a show that's, uh, that's got two timelines. And it's a production timeline, which goes throughout the year, and a social media timeline, which goes throughout the year 24-7. So, so Peter Planet, basically the, the idea was, you know, two Emirati brothers traveling around the world and we meet all these change makers, these thought leaders, and we tell their stories through 25 to 27 minute episodes. And in an episode you will find, you know, topics related to food, to people, to adventures. You know, there's a little bit for everybody. And 2013 and 2014, all our episodes are about that. And you can actually watch him on Dubai One TV's uh, website or on, on Dubai One TV. Now, what's happened is going forward, we're, we're I mean, this is a great platform to also uh, share some of our future plans is what, what we're looking at doing is because Peter Plan is, is getting uh, so big, we're actually splitting the show into three different shows. One that addresses people, all these amazing thought leaders and change makers that we're meeting around the world. A second called Peter Planet Adventure. So this is, it has to do with like going to, you know those pictures that you get on social media of the most beautiful landscapes, like so far away, whether in mountains or forests or jungles, and these people doing these amazing treks. So there, it's, a, it's a show dedicated to that, to exploration, to, you know, to, to, to adventure. And then the third one is food. Everybody loves food, so we, we have to create a, a separate series for that. So it's PETA Planet Food. And certainly, uh, you know, as, as far as we're concerned, we've, we've eaten at some of the best places in the world, so it, it just made total sense. So this is what I was actually referring to a little bit earlier in terms of how our production runs. And um, our show basically lasts the entire year. And if you look at it, the larger circle over there is the entire timeline for us. And our show is, is, is different. Is that text clear? Is it easier if we walk oh, over here and, and talk about it? Oh, yeah, it is a little bit. Maybe okay. you want to point. Yeah, I'll, uh, oh, is there a pointer here? I can point for you. OK, ah, good. Finally, big brother is doing something for little brother. So um, the, 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 way, the, way we, the way we do this is uh, our content is 100% crowdsourced. Hi, Nora. How you doing? Our uh, content, oh, should I have not said that? Sorry. <laughs> uh, our content is 100% uh, crowdsourced. In a sense, you know, where we travel to is voted by you. You can vote for where we're going to go on season three. The people that we meet is through conversations that we have with you across social media. So you tell us, who are these change makers in the cities that you live in? The places that we eat at is chosen by you. And everything else throughout our show. So it's the first show and I don't think there's another show like this in the world today where 100%, we don't have writers. And I remember when we came to 2454 in 2010, early 2010, and we said, we have this idea for a TV show where there's no content written. They're like, we love the idea, let's work on it. And it took us two years, we got some money, and we shot it. But, but basically, throughout the entire uh, timeline of production, so from, uh, 
from creating, from, from when we do all our pre-production and we were actually uh, putting together the, the season all the way into production when we're, when we're filming and we do 12 countries in about 80 days every year, uh, all the way up to post-production, which a lot of it is done at, uh, at Intaj as well, our partners, all the way to broadcast. And um, we've, been, we've been broadcasting on, on TV, a lot of our content on Dubai One. Uh, we also co do a lot of content on, uh, online with partners like uh, U-Turn. Uh, Mr. Casuara sitting over there, uh, and of course some other online uh, partners as well, all the way up to when we are actually just, you know, planning next season. Never stops. This is the production timeline, and we mirror that with a social media timeline. So we are actually engaging you, audience, they play a role in creating this show with us. So, so I, I mean, the reason why we do this, it, it's, it's, uh, it can get complicated, it takes a lot longer, but I think you know, the end result is what's important. And the end result is we find that you know, that content that we crowdsource from our community, it creates a sense of ownership with our online followership. And, then, and secondly, it assures us and we ensure that we create relevant content because we're, we're actually asking our future viewers what it is that you want us to create. We're involving them in that decision-making process. And honestly, the way it's possible is, you know, we, we don't use fancy technology or, or anything like that. We just get online and we just have conversa conversations with our followers. So, so that's why we, we do what we do. Yeah. And, I, and I think I, I want to add, you know, you, you, can, you can definitely see we, we're, we're, a, we're an entity that actually does a lot of strategic planning. So our back end in terms of who we're talking to on social media and why we achieve such large numbers is because our planning is very intricate. Everybody that's, that's followed us uh, or that is following us and that we follow, we worked on every single person one at a time. Every single one of them, and every single one of them is uh, is is somebody that we feel can benefit, and we can benefit from them uh, from being involved in the in the show. So this is really like a quality uh, of of, uh, of viewership or of uh, of followership that we uh, that we actually have, and also uh, our content is measurable. I mean, we've done two seasons of a show, our first show ever. You know, we got it sold while we were shooting the pilot with 2454. We got a call from Dubai One saying, I want the first season. We shot a second season. We've got a number of brands involved with us, like Google, uh, like Intercontinental Hotels, obviously 2454, um, Dubai One, Canon, I mean, several brands. So you can actually see um, that there is value to being involved with us. And I think a lot of our partners like to be involved with us because the brand is a, a fabric within the, the show. They're part of the show. They're aligned with the show. Uh, I also want to talk about you know, what, what, what this has done. So the last two years of traveling the world and uh, looking at the roads less traveled and looking at the ultra local in 24 different cities has resulted in uh, you know, a value for us locally here as well. So we've been asked to um, run a campaign for the Dubai Tourism Department, and today it is the largest tourism campaign uh, on, of this Instagram. Matter, on Instagram uh, of, of any, any campaign. And we've certainly been around the world and seen what everybody's doing, but just very quickly, it's about uh, having 12 people from Dubai who have created one-day itineraries of things to do, places to eat, adventures, things that are cultural and then flying in 12 of the top Instagrammers in the world to come and experience those, and we filmed them as 12 separate episodes, and it's called My Dubai uh, Trip. But, um, yeah, and, and you can actually watch that, uh, those series at the beginning of 2015 uh, on the birthday of hashtag My Dubai. So I, I think this is what makes it valuable, and the reason why you know, the Department uh, of, uh, of Tourism came to us, Dubai, uh, is you know you know everybody always talks about you know the glitz and glam of of, of Dubai and, and you know and they talk about you know all these amazing you know architectural feats and, and and things like like that but I don't think there's enough voice that goes to the heart and soul of the city now we as people who come from there you know we're we're Dera boys we you know born and raised there we know like all the best little restaurants and all the little places and alleys that you should go to and if if you ever need advice please. Uh, ask us, and we'll charge you a lot of money before telling you. Um, <laughs> so, uh, 
So, so the reason why they came to us is they wanted to show that side of Dubai. And that is what social travel is about. It's about exploring your city. It's, a, it's about seeing a city through the eyes of the locals. And I tell you, these 12 Instagrammers, 12 of the world's biggest Instagrammers with 500,000 to a million followers, they left feeling like they were a part of Dubai. And that's powerful. It's not about just bringing people to a city or to a country and taking them to a restaurant and saying, thank you very much for coming and go back. They connected with the people. And through the people, they connected with Dubai. So, um, so we've gone through a lot. Uh, believe it or not, we started as a shawarma restaurant. And true story, but that's, that's a whole new presentation. <laughs> Uh, so, and then from there, we went into filmmaking. And, and today, we're working with the, the tourism boards and, and, you know, and governments, like Dubai, like the UK. So we're the GC ambassadors to the UK currently, and we just came back from a GCC uh, roadshow. And we found out, can you, if you can go back, uh, we found out that what, you know, what we're really good at is we're good at building organic social communities. And it could be around brands, it could be about around campaigns or, or events. And it's really not just about managing a social media account. We do more than that. We create films so people watch the films. And then we use those films to get people talking and thinking online. And that's how you build a community. That's how you build an ecosystem. So I'll let you do this oh, one. This is my favorite slide. Yeah, I know. <laughs> So, uh, I'm, you know, uh, we, we certainly, uh, we have amazing partners today. Uh, as as Payman said, you know, uh, 2454 Abu Dhabi, uh, uh, Dubai, Dubai One, uh, U-Turn Entertainment. We have a list of brands today that support us from Google to Intercontinental Hotel to Canon to Uber and on and on and on. And, you know, uh, today we're starting to grow internationally because at the end of the day, you know, we have content that goes online and that people can watch. But we've always had international aspirations. And then going back to why do we do this? Why did we start this journey? Why did we stop selling shawarmas and start doing film? Because we were tired of non-Middle Easterners telling our narrative. We wanted an opportunity to tell our own narrative. And when we travel around the world and we meet all these thought leaders, all these amazing people who are doing amazing things for their communities in their part of the world, and they get to sit down with two guys, two Arabs, wearing kandura in Santiago, Chile, and we tell them, ask us any question you want. Then it just starts to flow. They're like, why do you dress that way? Why don't you wear pants? <laughs> And they start asking us all these different questions. What about this? What about that? Is this true? And is that? And we just answer like, yes, no, yes, no, we're not sure. And then all of a sudden, it becomes about one, two, three people, three people just having a conversation instead of two Arabs and another person having a conversation. All of a sudden, they forget that we're wearing a kendora. We're just another person. And I think that is the power of film. And that, for me, is, is where I get inspired. I love the fact that there's more and more content coming out of the Middle East. I love the fact that there's more and more organizations like 2454 Abu Dhabi that are supporting that because we need to start telling our own narrative because that narrative that you see on the news is just a small fraction of our society. It's insignificant, but yet it gets the most amount of voice. And, and, I, and just to, to put, uh, you know, just on a final note, to put that in, in perspective, I mean, yesterday we were talking about uh, with the UK tourism, the number of GCC tourists that go to, the, to London every year, and it is 600,000 uh, GCC nationals, and they spend uh, anywhere between two to three weeks over there. And just to let you know, if every single one of those people actually dressed like this and spoke to five people on one given day, the impact that that would have would be higher than the news that was played on in the UK in, in that day. And, and I'm not saying, you know, this is, it's, it's, I'm just saying that is the sort of impact that we have. I mean, we've traveled to 24 countries just like this, which probably outside of our great leaders and our great ambassadors, we're probably the most people that have traveled. 
And when we meet a change maker, that person has hundreds of thousands of followers. Millions, so, millions and, and millions. And, and into, into millions, but you are making a change. They're gonna go back and say, we just met two guys, yeah. you know, they dress like that, but they're just like us. So, so we're a big fan of like, you know, of uh, tr taking your dreams out of your head and putting it out there so you can see it, so you can visualize it, and you can let people visualize it. And part of the reason why we have all those brands at the bottom is, is you know, we want to be that show that's gonna be on CNN. We wanna be that show that's gonna be on the Travel Channel, or Al Jazeera Plus, or Nat Geo People, or Lonely Planet, or any of those channels. Why are there not any travel shows about two Middle Easterners traveling around the world, two Arabs? Why are there not, like, where's that top, like, Arabic chef show that travels around the world. Where? Where's that Arabic adventurer that's climbing all these different mountains and a show about them? Where are those shows? For a global audience, of course. For a global audience, but also for us. Can we not create? Are we not as good as you know, others around the world at creating? Are we not creative? I don't think so. So, Positive vibes, everybody. I want everybody in this audience to, to think of how we can get on those channels. And if you have a connection, if you can help, if you can put us there. I mean, we've actually, to be honest, spoken to a, a couple of uh, uh, the companies on there through the help of, of some of our close friends who are in the audience uh, today. We got to go. <laughs> Sorry, we gotta, we're quite Why, is, over Is time. the president waiting again? <laughs> Thank you so okay. much, guys. Thank you. Thank so you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And guess what? وانا ادعوكم للاستضافه في سكاي نيوز عربيه مع انكم ما حطيتوهم لكن بامكاننا نوفر هذه الفرصه لكم نتشرف فيكم. Thank you Mohammed and Dayman but Thank guess you. what after your presentation I'm thinking of traveling with my Sheila and Abaya. Awesome. I will have awesome. a lot of questions. Thank you.